Hello and welcome to the Gym RPG Show. There's been a massive piece of news regarding Intel's upcoming Rocket Lake CPUs. It looks like there's been a leak of a benchmark of the i7-11700K. So we're going to take a look at the performance of this CPU and we're going to compare it to AMD Zen 3 and we're going to talk a little bit about the price of this CPU or what price it should be. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Alright, so just as a quick aside, I actually bought a 10900K a couple of days ago for my gaming PC. Um, I was trying to choose between a 5900X or a 10900K, but I don't think that the 5900X will actually get down to the price of the 10900K, so I just went with the 10900K. But, uh, you know, when I saw this benchmark this morning of the 11700K, I was a little bit disappointed because this 11700K looks like it's going to be super fast. But with that said, I don't think there's anything wrong with just pulling the trigger and getting something because you could be waiting forever for uh, waiting for the next best greatest thing to arrive. And who knows when that thing actually comes, it might be really, really expensive. Let's take a look at this i7-11700K benchmark. Now, I'm not going to read the whole article, but essentially the i7-11700K is an 8-core and 16-thread CPU. It's going to have 3.6 GHz base clock and 5 GHz boost clock. And we're just going to move straight to the ben Geekbench score here, which is 1807 for the single-core score and 10,673 for the multi-core score. Now, let's compare it to the Comet Lake equivalent, which is the i7-10700K, and the single core score was 1,349. Now, that's a huge jump uh, from the 11700K to the 10700K, and that's about a 34% difference in single core performance in terms of Geekbench. So that's a crazy improvement in my book. Now, remember the Rocket Lake CPUs, it's the first time uh, they've changed the architecture for the CPU. So it used to be Skylake architecture in the previous Intel CPUs for, the, I guess, the last three or four generations. And now they've gone with this Cypress Cove core design. And that's one reason why the i7 and the i9 is going to be 8 core and 16 threads, whereas the Comet Lake uh, i9, it was actually 10 cores and 20 threads. So they had to reduce the core count and thread count to make way, I guess, for increased performance on the single core. And I think they did that because they knew they couldn't get 16 cores um, and compete with the AMD chiplet design. So if they couldn't beat AMD on multi-core, I guess they wanted to beat them on single core. And as you can see here, the i7-11700K single core performance beats the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X single core performance. So it's 1,807 versus 1,672. Now, in terms of real world performance, I don't even know if that's going to be that much in gaming terms because with the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, even though the single core performance or the Geekbench performance is better than the 10900K, if we look at the Tech Power Up reviews um, for the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X um, in their gaming tests at 720p. The 5950X, uh, the 5950X is at 100% and the 10900K is 3% better than the 5950X. So even though in terms of, I guess, a synthetic Geekbench so even though in terms of the Geekbench score, the 5950X is much stronger than the 10900K, in terms of real-world performance, uh, the 10900K is actually a little bit better in gaming than the 5950X. So I don't think you can look at this Geekbench score and say that the 11700K is 34% better than the 10700K and you should expect 20 or 30% performance improvement in your games, I think the performance difference in games will, might only be like 5 to 10% better. But 
the 11700K should be better than the 5950X, given that the 10900K is really close to the 5950X and in some cases beats the 5950X. So I think it's pretty safe to say that the 11700K will be better than the 5950X in gaming. So I'm not going to dwell too much on the multi-core score. You all know that the 5950X is 16 cores and 32 threads and it absolutely smokes the 11700K in terms of the multi-core score. But what I will say is that take a look at the 11700K versus the 10700K and you'll see there's quite a impressive performance improvement of about 18% between the 10700K and the 11700K. Now I want to take you back to my first video on Rocket Lake which was a couple of weeks ago and in that video, I looked at a tweet from Harukaze and also from David Bipo, and that was about the specs of Rocket Lake. And as you can see here, the specs for the 11700K is 5 gigahertz for the single core boost, and for the 11900K is 5.3 gigahertz. So there's a 0.3 gigahertz difference between the i7 and the i9. Now, I think that's pretty much the only difference. There might be a thermal velocity boost that you get on the i9 that you don't get on the i7 but it's not confirmed yet and I'm not sure about that but um, I think it, that might only that might be the only difference between the i7 and i9 so if you're wondering what the Geekbench score might be for the i9 well it's probably about 50 points difference because as you can see here the 10700k and the 10900k there's a 0.2 gigahertz difference and it's about 50 points Let's talk about the pricing for the new CPUs and I really think this i9-11900K they would be making a mistake if they priced it at $450 the same as the 5800X. I really hope that Intel uh, makes a bold choice and decides to price the 11900K at $400 and I think if they were to price it even higher at $500 then uh, it's basically game over for Intel. Uh, it's already game over anyway because AMD has a lot of good publicity right now, has a lot of good mind share. Uh, a lot of YouTubers are making uh, positive videos about AMD and not very many YouTubers are making videos about Intel and I think you can see quite clearly over YouTube that Intel videos get a lot less views than the AMD videos. So uh, AMD has the mind share right now and if AMD really wants to compete then they really need to lower the price and I think the i9 really needs to be $400. I think the i7 needs to be about $350. I think uh, if it was closer than that then I think everybody should just get the 11900K. But if it was more than $50, well, then the 1100K would be the much better deal because there's only 0.3 gigahertz difference in the clocks. It doesn't look like there's any other difference. So I think $50 difference would make sense in between the 11700K and the 11900K. All right, so that's going to be it for this one. Thanks for watching. And as always, if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this.